All right, I think this bad boy's on. Hello, everybody. So today I want to discuss Israel's use of human shields, according to the United Nations, U.S. aid to Israel, which doesn't exactly go to all the things you might think. So it's not just the Iron Dome. That's a small percentage. This is according to the Congressional Research Service, which is essentially a body that works for the U.S. Congress. That's going to shock you. And also Israel's... Um, how do I put this lightly? I don't think there's a, a good light way to discuss this, but essentially Israel's uh, use of sexual assault against Palestinian kids that nobody knows about, and I'm going to get demonetized if this ever does get monetized, which I don't really give a shit about that, to be honest with you. But I think that this channel is going to take a hit for discussing sexual assault. If you could donate to Patreon, that'd be great. If you don't, no problem. Appreciate a comment to spread awareness because this boosts the algorithm, blah, blah. You get the point. So, number one, a UN report about the use of human shields by Israel. Normally, when we discuss things like human shields, we always hear about the Palestinians. Oh, look at that. The Palestinians used human shields. What an atrocity. That is an atrocity. But right now, we are going to focus on Israel's use of human shields. Palestinian people who are used as human shields, a lot of times they are also kids. Why am I focused on this? Because it's not talked about often. Should other things like the Palestinian use of Palestinian human shields also be covered? I think they also do with Israeli civilians, but you get my point. Should that be covered as well? Yes. Am I going to focus on it right now? No. Why am I discussing both sides at the moment then? Because people usually say, well, no, they, that side might, maybe they do something, but what about this other side? And it's always done all the time. Oh, Biden did something. Well, what about Trump? Oh, Trump did something. What about Biden? We are mature adults, okay? God, damn, I'm gonna have to bleep both those out. We're mature adults. We can say both things are bad at the same time. I will do a video about the Palestinians as well. Right now we're focused on Israel's use of human shields. Okay, now, normally we have uh, reports by the UN talking about Palestinians, and I'm showing it right now. If you're listening, I'm showing an example on the screen. But the last report that I was able to find on Israel's use of human shields, which by the way, they're still doing this, but the last time the UN actually reported on this was all the way back July 4th, 2013. So the very first picture I wanna show you, so this is, a, this is official record by the United Nations. I'm gonna quote this, quote, the committee expresses deep concern about the continuous use of Palestinian children as human shields and informants. 14 such cases having been reported from January, 2010 to March 31st, 2013 only. Now keep in mind it says, only. This is only during that period of time, and 14 is what they were able to find. This does not include the total amount that this happens. That's incredibly important to remember. Normally, by the time the United Nations finds evidence of something, it is generally the tip of the spear. Not just with this specifically, but generally speaking, that's the way that it goes. Keep that in mind. Okay, here's another screenshot, another quote. Almost all the soldiers using children as human shields and informants have remained unpunished. Oopsie poopsie. Now there's two examples I want to discuss. And this is going to, this is kind of like a, a, a pyramid made from Dante's Inferno or something like that. So we're going to keep getting deeper and deeper into how systemic this problem really is. First things first, one example that I want to show your, throw your way. The state party soldiers have used Palestinian children to enter potentially dangerous buildings ahead of them and to stand in front of military vehicles in order to stop throwing of stones against those vehicles. So there's specific reports saying, hey, look at that. They're using them as shields to get Palestinians to stop throwing stones. Gee, what if this happened in Ukraine? Do you think Americans would say, no, Ukrainians don't throw stones against the Russians? Probably not. We'd probably say, well, good for them. But when it's the Palestinians, it's a little bit different. Hmm. I wonder why. Okay, now let's go back into the prosecution. So this is the second example I want to go into, which goes into uh, how people are convicted if they're convicted, etc., etc. Soldiers convicted for having forced at gunpoint a nine-year-old child to search bags suspected of containing explosives only received a suspended sentence of three months and were demoted. Okay, so that child's going to be scarred for life. It's great that that child didn't die. Okay, we can all say, hell yeah, kid didn't die. Cool. Scarred for life. Parents, scarred for life. Relatives, scarred for life. Friends, scarred for life. Everybody's destroyed because a nine-year-old kid was used as a shield. And the only thing that the soldiers got was a suspension and a demotion. No prison sentence. Nothing else. Not even a fine. You're not going to be able to find their names, by the way. I checked. 
and it keeps getting worse. So I'm gonna show you one more. I'm, I'm gonna slow down on all the documents and stuff here just a second, but I just wanna amp up the evidence. One more here for you guys. So 2008 to 2009, this according to Human Rights Watch, two Israeli soldiers were found guilty of using a Palestinian boy as a human shield during the 2008 to 2009 offensive. What happened to them? They were given demoted, demotions and they were suspended. So there's a standard procedure that is followed by the Israeli government whenever things like this happen. Demotion and also a suspended sentence. What does that tell us? That tells us that this happens enough to where they have a standard protocol that is created in order to deal with this. No prison sentence, nothing, even though this is a human rights abuse. Americans, is this something that we can support? Look, even if you're supportive of the Israelis or the Palestinians, we can both agree that is not good for the Israeli government to do this. If you're pro-Israel and you hear that the government is doing things like that, you might think to yourself, hmm, maybe it's a good idea that we improve our public image to create more support for the Israeli government. Maybe Human Shield is not the way to go. Maybe people should actually be prosecuted. Maybe the U.S. should have tied A conditionality on top of the support, which I'm going to discuss in another video shortly after this, maybe there should be more conditionality with the aid to investigate things like this. That would be something that would be good to promote. Okay. I love the title of this, by the way. I'm showing a document right now. I love the title of this. This is by the Israeli embassy. It's a title. It says, US, or excuse me, UN condemns the use of human shields. So <laughs> they're not talking about Israeli use of human shields, by the way. You're talking about Palestinian use of human shields. Israel has widely acknowledged the fact that human shields is a, a terrible thing, but yet there's no acknowledgement about their own use of it. Okay, so conclusion, how do I, what, what, what are the final remarks here? Listen, you cannot, as an American, you cannot say that you're for freedom and justice and all these other things if you're still supportive of the Israeli government doing these types of things, all right? We are complicit by default because we publicly support the state of Israel. Now, this isn't a, a political activist speech right now saying that, oh, look, we need to uh, abolish the state of Israel and all these other things. Listen, I'm coming about this from a factual matter of fact standpoint. If we do not do something about this, if we don't spread awareness about this situation, if we don't bring people's attention towards this situation by sharing videos like this or the sources that I listed in the description box with everything labeled. If we don't share sources and things like this, history will not be kind to us. We are going, we being Americans, are going to be a part of the problem. And look, we are already associated to the part of the problem. But it would be, this would be very easy to, sorry, I'm like spitting everywhere. This would be very easy to remedy. Hey, Israel, how about if you don't Put these people on trial we will withhold aid problem solved okay second story have you guys ever wondered about how much aid the u.s actually gives to israel we often hear about things like like uh michigan you know flint michigan how they have no clean water by the way that's still a thing fun fact we hear about all these things we're always worried about why does the u.s government never have seemed to have money well we spend billions of dollars in things like aid and military budget, which by the way, half of which goes to contracting companies, which have a vested interest in ensuring that we stay in, in, in wars and so on that put our soldiers at risk for conflicts they shouldn't be in. So if you actually care about the troops, you would be more supportive towards being careful that they're not entering wars that they shouldn't be in that have no relevance to the US. But I digress, don't wanna go on a, on a full blown tangent with that. For now, let's focus on how much aid have we given Israel and where's it going? Okay, so this is according to the Congressional Research Service, which is a, a research institution that is connected to the United States Congress. So whenever Congress finds a lot of information about a specific topic in order to write policy, they get their information from this. So this is just kind of like a, a theoretical objective institution that creates information. It's widely used in academics because it's considered to be less biased than other institutions, believe it or not. Okay, cool. How much aid? So first of all, in 2023, we've given $3.8 billion in aid to Israel. Now, a lot of times we hear about, well, it's to use for defensive capabilities such as the Iron Dome. They need all this aid or else they're not going to be able to defend themselves against uh, upcoming missiles. Okay, well, missile systems such as the Iron Dome take up $500 billion, million dollars, million. Okay, so if they have 3.8 billion and that's only 500 million, then uh, what's the other money going to? Well, there's a lot of things, a lot of which is offensive capabilities. 
oopsie poopsie, that's used in other countries. That makes us complicit. If we give them aid and then they spend money on offensive weapons that are used in other countries, such as Lebanon and Syria and Iran, then that makes us complicit. So let me give you specific de details here. Israel used, or bought, excuse me, F-35 and F-15 fighter jets that were used in places like Lebanon, Syria, and Iran. This according to the BBC. And Israel was the first country outside of the U.S. to acquire the single-seat fighter and has received nine of the 50 F-35 fighters it has ordered so far and could take up to 75. So it is creating... The U.S. is giving uh, financial incentives for Israel to buy U.S. jets to therefore use in other countries. And I don't want to hear all these pro-capitalist individuals, and I'm not going to go on an activist rant here. I'm sticking factual. But let me ask you from an ethics standpoint, whoever, whether you're Republican, Democrat, whatever, let me ask you an activist, or excuse me, a, a objective ethical question. A lot of people say, well, that creates jobs for Americans. And I say, well, how specifically does it do it? Well, you create things like fighter jets that are bought by other countries and then that keeps business for Americans. Okay, do you think that's sustainable? Okay, probably not. Next, if we sell those weapons to a country who uses it in other countries, the countries that are the recipients of those strikes, for example, in Syria and Lebanon and Iran and these sorts of places, do you think those people in those countries are going to be more friendly towards us? Or do you think they're going to slowly start siding with maybe China? My guess is they're probably going to start siding more towards countries like China, maybe even with Russia, because that's the only way they can get back at the U.S. There's a lot of implications is my point. There's a lot of problems with what is happening, and we should probably focus a little bit more time and attention on how specifically our weapon systems and our aid is being used in order to build up support. If we are concerned about China and if we're concerned about Russia and these sorts of things, then aside from the humanitarian aspect, which I'm not focusing on right now, even though I think it's extremely important because I'm putting everything through more of an American lens of the power competitions between like China, by example, we need to build support. And we also need to care about people. We need to focus in making sure that our aid is actually being used towards proper causes. We shouldn't be reliant on, by example, the weapons contracting companies in order to build jobs for Americans. Instead, we should revolutionize our system and start to develop other types of technology, whether it's artificial intelligence or green technology would be a great start. But you get my point. We shouldn't be focused on that. We shouldn't be focused on the financial endeavors. We should be focused on making sure that our resources are being re reallocated towards the U.S., and we're very careful about what we're giving to other countries and how it is used. That is the point that I'm trying to make. And the goal of this, this video specifically is to draw awareness to these problems and saying, hey, look at that. U.S. spends $3.8 billion on uh, aid to Israel, most of which is not going towards defense. Americans, hello. Hey, guess what? These things are being used in a hmm, more violent purpose. And I'm not even getting into all the different like wars and stuff and all the weapons we gave to the Taliban and all these other things. You get the point, right? So please spread awareness of these issues to show people, hey, look, this actually happens and we should be aware of the fact that maybe we should reallocate some of those funds to Flint, Michigan and not towards uh, Israel who already has a military advantage over everybody else in the entire region. Anyway, you get the point. Okay, final video that I want to talk about, and this is pretty heavy. It has to do with Palestinian kids in Israeli Defense Force, I guess the Israeli government, you could speak a little bit more broadly, in their custody, Palestinian kids who are tortured and sexually abused. Again, like I've said, I would appreciate any donations to Patreon because this, just mentioning this is going to get me destroyed, not only because I'm discussing Palestinians, but also the fact that I'm discussing sexual assault because it is absolutely important, incredibly important, but yet I'm going to get punished as a result of this algorithm or just leave a comment or whatever, something that promotes this in the algorithm because I guarantee, you might have had an idea that things like this have existed before, but you probably didn't know specifically, specific instances where this has happened. I want to talk about this. The news doesn't cover this. You get the point. I'm very passionate about trying to get this information out, which is why I create all the TikToks and stuff like that. So uh, <laughs> it sounds like I'm on one right now. That's because I am. All right. So let me give you specific details. 
So this is according to the old UN report from July 4th, 2013. It's very hard to get evidence for these things, even though we know they widely occur, not only from an anecdotal standpoint of things that are reported in the media, but it's hard to get the UN to investigate this. If you're listening to this from the longer podcast, this UN report is the same report that I mentioned earlier about Palestinian kids being used as human shields. Now I'm going to quote this. It has to do with Palestinian children. Pal so Palestinian children are, quote, systematically subject to physical and verbal violence, humiliation, painful restraints, hooding of the head and face in a sack threatened with death, physical violence, and sexual assault against themselves or members of their family, restricted access to toilet, food, and water. These crimes are perpetrated from the time of arrest, during transfer and interrogation, to obtain a confession, but also on an arbitrary basis as testified by several Israeli soldiers, as well as during pretrial detention. Okay. First of all, these walls are paper thin. There's probably everybody walking around wondering what the hell I'm even talking about right now. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm laughing about the, the people hearing, not about the topic. You get the point, though. Now, it's unclear how old these kids are. They could be old enough to walk. Could it be all the way up to 17 years old? We really don't know. We have no idea. And that's kind of an unfortunate aspect because you think that we would have a strong under, stronger understanding about this. But the point is that they've been, it's, it's a wide scale that happens in different aspects of custody. Okay, so the question is, how bad is this really? Well, I have more information for you. So these kids are taken from their parents in the middle of the night, sometimes for months at a time, and many in solitary confinement for the entire time. And I'm gonna get into how bad it is. I'm just gonna keep going with that, but just to stop for a second, that sounds pretty bad. Solitary confinement. The only place that I've ever seen to make the argument that solitary confinement isn't cruel and inhumane punishment if done for long periods of time was the United States government in 1985. The Department of Justice, if I remember correctly, had posted a quote unquote academic article that made the argument that it wasn't cruel or inhumane punishment. But yet the Israeli government does that for kids over the span of several months. That sounds particularly bad, especially could you imagine being a parent? Just side note, could you imagine being a parent, having your kid taken away for months, not knowing where they're at at all, and then being completely isolated? Say they're like 10, right? That's bad. Anyway, so moving forward, there is uh, acts of torture, obviously. These kids are also interrogated in Hebrew. That's an important part. So I was in Israel for three months, so I can guarantee you that a lot, most of the, the Palestinians and so on don't know Hebrew, right? They speak Arabic. So if they're interrogated in Hebrew and they're kids, how are they possibly going to know how to answer the questions? Now, on top of this too, they're forced to sign confessions in Hebrew in order to be released. They don't read Hebrew. They don't know what's being said. Lawyers also don't have access to Arabic. So if you have a Palestinian lawyer who doesn't really know Hebrew, then how are you going to help? Or if you're an Israeli who knows Hebrew, then to what extent are you considered to be reliable who might actually have their best interests at hand? You get the point here. Now let's talk about the extent to which this issue happens. Are we talking about this happened to five kids or one kid or three kids or two and a half kids? I, I don't know. So here's what it is. Specifically, this is according to Haaretz, which is an Israeli paper, believe it or not. Quote, 69 minors were allegedly beaten, four minors were reportedly being sexually assaulted, and 12 said they were threatened with sexual assault. <sighs> there's not, there's no details, by the way, so if you're, if you're wondering any more specifics about the assaults, there's, uh, no, whether it's Haaretz or whether it's the United Nations, they don't really go into, like, specific details other than it's assault, so... If, don't come at me with the, if you're skeptical, like, oh, define sexual assault or anything. Listen, I'm not going to entertain those things right now. You can uh, do your own research and then let me know about that. Now, in addition to this, it's clearly bad enough because in 2011, 19 boys had attempted suicide. I'm going to butcher these names, but in Matin Detention Facility and in the Given Givon Detention Facility, I apologize, no disrespect to... Uh, People that speak Arabic or Hebrew with the names, I don't know, they're probably Hebrew, but uh, apologize for the pronunciation, but 19 boys attempted suicide. How bad do things have to get for 19 kids? Keep in mind, Israel and the Palestinian areas, not a very big area. 19. Attempted. Now, the last thing I'm going to leave off on with this is, look. Am I saying the Palestinian Authority on the opposite side? 
Am I saying that they're, they're amazing people and et cetera, et cetera? No, I'm not, okay? I'm not. They've done a lot of bad things as well. But listen, if us as Americans, if we're focused on upholding things like important values, and we see things like this, how specifically are we going to go out and make the argument, hi, China, you can't do these things to the different Uyghur Muslims, which I'm probably going to be censored because I said that as well, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist. This is just a matter of fact, and I've worked in media for a fair amount of time. Started the YouTube channel only a few years ago, but I worked in media for much longer than that, almost a decade now. That's gonna get censored. But we can't say, hi, that's cruel and inhumane, but yet we support the Israeli government doing all these different things. We pay them. Like I said in a previous video, or unless you're watching the whole podcast, we give them $3.8 billion in 2023. They use children as human shields, which I mentioned in video number one, unless you're watching the whole podcast. And then, then we, we, we see situations like this with the different assaults. The funny part about all of this, and I don't mean ha-ha funny, I mean funny is in a bit of an irony, is that would you like to know how much the American government has talked about this? Probably zero. You have all these different politicians also coming out. Oh, do things for the kids, anti-grooming, anti all these other things, right? Great. What is your stance on Israel? Do you even know about this? I bet they probably don't even know about this. They being congressmen and women, just by example, senators. A lot of times, and I've worked with them before, I can tell you they probably don't know about this. So what is the point of everything that I'm discussing? Look, we have a responsibility as Americans we have to understand who are we giving money to and who are we supporting. We are getting into an increasingly volatile state, not only within the US, but internationally. We gotta keep ourselves in check or else someone is going to do it. That is why all of this is important, let alone the, the, the historical legacy aspect of all of this, let alone everything else, the humanitarian aspect about it. You get the point, okay? You all understand. So please, for God's sake, can we start talking about real conversations and stop all of this superficial shit about whatever is happening with the Kardashians. I don't care. I don't care. You know what I do care about though? I care about these kids. I care about the amount of money we're spending on offensive weapons that is going to push us farther into wars that we have absolutely no business or no interest to actually be in. And I think everybody should start to care a little bit more about that as well. 